Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the Carolina Panthers 2018 NFL Draft Class based on analytics. And in this video, uh, we're going to go through every single pick that the Carolina Panthers selected uh, based on data. So we're going to look at them based on production and athleticism data to determine how much upside they potentially have based on how prior players in the past performed based on all those particular benchmarks, etc. So um, if you're new to the channel, new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. Uh, so if you're not familiar with what market share data is or explosive lower body strength score or any of the other things I talk about in this video, um, the uh, terms and definitions again will be in the description. So with all that stuff out of the way, let's get to the first pick of the draft for the Carolina Panthers and DJ Moore, uh, wide receiver out of Maryland. Uh, when you look at his production data, he had a 99.27 passing yardage market share production score, which pretty much hits the five-time All-Pro, three-time All-Pro, three-time Pro Bowl, and long-term starter area. So very, very productive player. When you look at the averages of the position, well above what the averages are in terms of an All-Pro player, Pro Bowl player, and starter player, and fantastic athleticism traits. 97.12 in terms of explosiveness, 92.65 in terms of speed, and 91.74 in terms of and flexibility for his size. DJ Moore is by far the best testing wide receiver in this draft class based on production and based on athleticism traits. And I do think he has a very, very bright future um, with the Panthers um, if he gets a shot to, you know, eventually become either the number one or a high-end number two for them. Then, of course, we get to Dante Jackson, a cornerback out of LSU. Um, when you look at his production data, he had a 77.33 solo tackle score, a 47.84 uh, uh, pass deflection score. Uh, the only good thing about him is his solo tackle data definitely hits above the average score for an all pro slash pro bowl player, uh, but his pass deflection data is kind of lacking. Uh, doesn't really have all pro, he's not really near the all pro average or pro bowl average in terms of his pass deflection data, and that's a major sort of question mark here. And in terms of athleticism data, only a 37.53 explosive lower body strength score and an 85.12 speed score. Um, didn't quite hit the Pro Bowl bottom and threshold in terms of explosiveness. Definitely has a very good speed score. Didn't do any flexibility testing, which is troublesome um, when, you, when, you, when you have a cornerback who doesn't do the flexibility testing. Um, but overall, I think Dante Jackson does have a good chance to become a long-term starting cornerback. There definitely are some question marks in terms of his uh, production data and in terms of his athleticism data as well because um, he's not very explosive and he, his flexibility testing is also kind of up in the air. And of course, we get to Rashawn Golden, uh, defensive safety out of Tennessee. Um, when you get to his production data, he had a 40.38 solo tackle score, 98.32 interception score, and a 25.55 pass deflection score. Doesn't quite hit all pro or pro bowl potential in terms of his overall production. When you look at the averages, averages at the position, he lacks solo tackle and pass deflection data as well. So he's not a complete safety. He's mostly a safety that got a lot of interceptions, but didn't really impact the game much in terms of tackling or in terms of, uh, you know, causing pass deflections. And when you look at athleticism data, 8.69 in terms of explosiveness, 25.36 in terms of speed, and 23.98 in terms of flexibility for his size, does not have all pro or pro bowl potential. And there's never been a long-term starting safety with his athleticism traits, especially explosiveness. Um, so there's never been a long-term safety with, uh, with less than a 15.46 explosion score. And that's definitely another sort of major issue in terms of uh, Rashawn Golden. Um, so very unlikely that he becomes a long-term starter based on his athleticism traits. And of course, we get to Ian Thomas, uh, tied in out of Indiana. Uh, when you look at his production data, he had a 47.70 market share production score. Doesn't hit at least the bottom in all pro threshold, but does hit at least above the Pro Bowl threshold of 25.75 out of 100. Um, not very good in terms of his overall production compared to the average all pro score, Pro Bowl score, and starter score. Uh, but definitely has good athleticism traits. 96.27 in terms of explosiveness, 79.59 in terms of speed, and 89.70 in terms of flexibility for his size. Pretty much has all pro slash Pro Bowl potential when you look at his overall athleticism traits. And he's kind of a boomer bust type tight end. His athleticism traits could turn him into a very special player at the next level, um, but he also might just end up being nothing at the next level. So it, it's kind of hard to tell with tight ends when it comes to, uh, you know, production, you know, when they're not productive. Um, but guys like Jimmy Graham and guys like Jordan Cameron have definitely set the standard that if you have great athleticism traits, there is a chance that you can translate that into a couple of seasons of greatness. 
but ultimately Ian Thomas will definitely need some development. Then of course you get to Marcus Haynes, edge out of Ole Miss. Uh, when you look at his production data, 59 in terms of solo tackle data, 81.61 in terms of sack data, and 60.37 in terms of tackle for loss data. Uh, pretty much has Pro Bowl level production in terms of the bottom and thresholds, but athleticism wise, doesn't have all pro, pro Bowl level athleticism traits across the board, only 20.48 in terms of explosiveness, 54.92 in terms of speed, and 44.46 in terms of flexibility for his size. There's a very good shot that Marcus Haynes becomes a long-term starter based on his production and based on his athleticism traits, but I do think it's very unlikely that he becomes a high-quality starter based on his overall profile. Of course, you get to Jermaine Carter, uh, linebacker out of Maryland. Uh, 58.34 in terms of solo tackle data. It doesn't hit the all-pro threshold or pro bowl threshold, but does hit at least the starter threshold. Definitely well below average of what the starter average is of 79.20, so that definitely is a concern with him. And athleticism-wise, not that fantastic. 20.88 in terms of explosiveness, 38.02 in terms of speed, and only 40.15 in terms of flexibility for his size. Looks closer to a starter than he does an all-pro slash pro bowl player uh, based on his overall profile. Um, so that's the basics when it comes to Jermaine Carter. I think it's very unlikely that he becomes a all-pro slash pro bowl player. Starter is definitely a possibility, but it's going to be an uphill battle because of his production and the lack of athleticism here. Then, of course, we get to Andre Smith, linebacker out of North Carolina. When you get to his production data, 77.47 in terms of solo tackle data. Definitely hits the Pro Bowl threshold here. Close to the starter average production score, so definitely better production than uh, Jermaine Carter. Athleticism-wise, doesn't really have Pro Bowl athleticism traits, but does have decent athleticism traits. 52.96 in terms of explosiveness, 83.06 in terms of speed, and 42.22 in terms of flexibility for his size. Pretty much looks like a starting linebacker versus an all-pro slash so Pro Bowl player, but he's definitely someone that does have a chance to become a long-term starter when you look at his uh, production data and his athleticism traits. Then, of course, you get to Kendrick Norton, uh, defensive tackle out of Miami. Uh, when you look at his production data, 32.84 in terms of solo tackle data, 31.95 in terms of sack data, and 35.55 in terms of tackle for loss data. Doesn't look like an all-pro or Pro Bowl uh, defensive tackle when you look at his overall production, and we look at the averages of the position well below what the all-pro average is, Pro Bowl average and starter average in terms of his overall production. And on top of that, his athleticism data is not that fantastic either. Uh, so uh, bottom line, uh, when, he, when you get to a guy like Kendrick Norton, is uh, Norton is just very unlikely uh, to become uh, much of anything at the next level and most likely a backup to uh, a practice squad player. So overall, when you look at this particular draft class uh, of the Panthers, it's really not that fantastic. Uh, the, the first pick of the draft definitely was a, a solid start. DJ Moore um, definitely has a good shot to become the best wide receiver from this draft class. Dante Jackson can become a long-term starter. Ian Thomas has some athletic upside, so you have that going for you. Andre Smith has some upside as well. Uh, but uh, there's just a lot of guys in this class that just lack production, lack athleticism, uh, and uh, very unlikely to become successful outcomes. So um, last year's draft for the Panthers was by far one of the best drafts based on data. Uh, this class is not as likely to hit those marks. So definitely a good start to the class. Uh, but they didn't finish very well. Uh, but let me know in the comment section below, how do you feel about the Carolina Panthers draft class? And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. You can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. And you can also follow me on Twitter at Gemmetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.